A super licence is a driver's ticket to ride in Formula 1. As Colton Herta recently discovered, even if you have the offer of a race seat without the right paperwork, you cannot compete in F1. Currently, to qualify for an FIA Formula 1 driver super licence to use its official name, you must accumulate 40 points based on your achievements in three of the past four years. For those of you wondering what the super licence looks like, former Haas reserve driver Louis Delatraz handily tweeted a photo of his recently. Herta only has 32 super licence points, and despite lobbying from Red Bull, which wanted to place him at AlphaTauri, the FIA stood firm, despite the legitimate criticism that IndyCar is undervalued by the points system. Clearly, the problem is with the criteria rather than Herta himself, who is self-evidently a driver who should tick the safety, experience and performance boxes. And as a look back through Formula 1 history reveals, there are eight world champions who would likely have failed in their bids for a super licence were the current system in place. We are considering only their achievements in car racing and not factoring in the potential for gaining extra points through hypothetical free practice runs. And for some, we can only estimate the number of super licence points they'd have got given the shifting landscape of the junior ladder means direct equivalents are not always possible to draw. So here's our selection of eight world champions who may not have been granted a super licence were the current rules in place in their time. 8. Fernando Alonso Fernando Alonso is the most marginal case on our list. He came into F1 with Minardi in 2001 as a 19-year-old with just two seasons in car racing under his belt. He finished fourth in the 2000 International F3000 Championship, the equivalent of today's Formula 2, having jumped up from ninth in the points with victory in the Spa season finale. That's worth 30 super license points. But the previous year, he won the predominantly Spanish-based Euro Open by Nissan Championship. While this was the forerunner of the Nissan and Renault World Series categories, it was a much lower level series, and it was a relatively new one that wasn't part of the mainstream ladder. While it's possible that winning it might have paid the 10 points Alonso will have needed to qualify for a super licence, it's far from a foregone conclusion. So we can't say for sure that Alonso wouldn't have got a super licence, but at best it would have been close, especially with a few points for karting thrown into the mix. But given he's one of the great F1 drivers of the 21st century, it's remarkable he could even have been a marginal case. 7. Damon Hill Damon Hill came from nowhere to land his big F1 break with Williams in 1993, but his first chance in F1 came with bat marker Brabham in 1992. Given British F3 in that era was roughly the equivalent of the current European F3 Championship in stature, Hill would have earned 20 points for third place in the standings. To that, he'd add a further 8 for 7th place in F3000, although his career at that level was more impressive than results suggested when you consider he bagged 3 pole positions. That puts Hill 12 points short of qualifying for a super licence, meaning he would never have started on the path that took him to the 1996 World Championship had the current system been in place back then. 6. Alan Jones Alan Jones did nothing during his pre-F1 career to mark himself out as a driver who would go on to win the 1980 World Championship for Williams. While the racing landscape was very different back then, Jones likely wouldn't have made the super licence cutoff point despite having some success in the three Formula 3 championships running in Britain at the time, peaking with second in the MCD run series in 1973. He also finished second in Britain's Formula Atlantic Championship the following year, but even with a generous allowance of super licence points for those achievements, it wouldn't have been enough to land him the early F1 chances that preceded his chance to make a mark driving for Shadow. There, he won the 1977 Austrian Grand Prix before moving to Williams, where he became one of the great drivers of the era. 5. Jensen Button Jensen Button was eyeing a move up to International F3000 after finishing third in British F3 in 1999. But his impressive performance in a test for the Prost F1 team caught the eye of Williams. His winter testing running for Williams was effectively part of a shootout for the drive with Bruno Junquera, which Button eventually prevailed in. But would he have qualified for a super licence? He gets 20 points for his British F3 success. 
In 1998, he won the British Formula 4 Championship, which is broadly the equivalent of today's Formula 4, so that's a further 12 points. He did also finish second in the European Formula Ford series, but that was a short, sharp series that overlapped with British Formula Ford, meaning that it couldn't also be counted anyway. So that puts him on 32 points, and even with a few extra points for karting, he wouldn't have made the 40-point cutoff, meaning his stellar debut season with Williams in 2000 might never have happened. 4. Nigel Mansell Nigel Mansell would only have scraped together around 17 super license points prior to making his Formula 1 debut for Lotus in 1980. The majority of those would have been earned by winning the British Formula 4 Championship in 1977, although he also finished in the top 10 of the 1979 British F3 series. This meant Mansell arrived in F1 with Team Lotus relatively unheralded, but he made a good impression across five seasons with the team to land a Williams drive in 1985. But the team underestimated even then how good he was, with Mansell going on to win 31 Grand Prix and the 1992 World Championship. 3. Kimi Raikkonen Kimi Raikkonen would have been nowhere near getting a super licence under F1's current regulations, given his main achievement was winning the 2000 British Formula Renault Championship on top of outings in Formula Ford the year before. Making the leap from 2 litre Formula Renault to F1 was unprecedented, meaning that it was hugely controversial that he got a super licence at all. After his impressive performances in testing, Sauber wanted to run him in 2001, but it took a vote of the F1 Commission to allow him to be granted a super licence. This was only on a provisional basis and up for review, with FIA President Max Mosley the only member to vote against the proposal. Although Mosley warned against this, he was proven wrong, with Raikkonen excelling for Sauber and soon emerging as a race-winning driver with McLaren and then a world champion with Ferrari. Even if we're generous with Raikkonen's points, awarding the 18 that the Formula Renault Euro Cup was awarded until it ended in 2020, he would be nowhere near making 40 points based on the current criteria. 2. Nicky Lauda Few would have picked Nicky Lauda as a future F1 race winner, let alone a three times world champion and Ferrari legend, based on his junior career. Prior to making his F1 debut for March in 1972, Lauda made little impression in his early tin top or Formula 3 outings. After what he described as a non-season racing in F3 in 1970, during which he was unimpressed with driving standards, he decided to gamble. He took out a hefty loan to fund a step up to F2 with March, which allowed him to finish 10th in the European Championship. This was nowhere near enough to earn the super license points under the current rules, but he expanded his deal to cover F1 and F2 with March in 1972. It wasn't until he joined BRM in 1973, a move that also required him to bring money, that he caught Ferrari's eye, most famously with his performance on the streets of Monaco, where he retired from third place after suffering a gearbox failure. 1. Max Verstappen Max Verstappen's arrival in Formula 1 at the age of 17 in 2015 was, puzzlingly given how good he was in his rookie year, the trigger for a reform of the super license system. The changes brought in for 2016 would have meant he didn't qualify for a super license on several counts. First and foremost, the rules were changed to allow only drivers who were 18 years old and who held a road driving license to race. Under those rules, Verstappen wouldn't have been eligible for a super license until 2016. That was his second season in F1, the one in which he took his first Grand Prix win straight after being promoted to Red Bull's main team. But he also wouldn't have had enough super license points, with just 20 for finishing third in the European Formula 3 Championship. Verstappen was proof of the old adage that if you're good enough, you're old enough, and it's a bizarre quirk of fate that his arrival made the FIA create a system that would have prevented him from coming into F1 in the first place. After all, as our ranking shows, those rare talents capable of winning the World Championship will always be able to cut it in F1, even if their careers up to that point aren't as spectacular as you might expect. Let us know in the comments what you think of the FIA Super License Point system, and what other drivers should, or should not, have been granted the necessary documentation in F1 over the years.